What I'd like to discuss this afternoon is the role of vitamin D in lupus. And this is an area of growing interest in the uh, ruminologic and the lupus uh, community. And I'd like to um, share with you some of the uh, data and some of our recently completed work. So lupus is a systemic autoimmune disease um, characterized by the loss of tolerance and the production of autoantibodies and is additionally character characterized by multiple clinical um, manifestations and features, many of which are illustrated in this slide. But what we know is that um, in patients with clinical disease, even before they develop symptoms, before they have the um, um, disease diagnosed, that they may produce autoantibodies, often years before the onset of uh, clinical symptoms. And so there are patients with um, genetic risks and uh, genetic predispositions to develop a clinical disease, and we heard about some of these risks, and that some of these patients will um, go on and lose tolerance, produce autoantibodies, and some of these um, patients, not all, will go on to develop um, symptoms and, cl and clinical disease. And the environmental and hormonal factors that um, trigger this um, progression towards autoimmune disease are truly um, not well characterized at this point. And what I would like to um, propose or to have you consider is that vitamin D, or vitamin D deficiency that is, may be a environmental trigger that um, perpetuates um, this uh, spectrum of disease. So vitamin D historically has effects on calcium and bone homeostasis. It enhances intestinal calcium absorption. It also um, enhances a bone resorption of calcium by stimulating pre-osteoclast to differentiate into osteoclast. And it does this by inducing expression of right ligand on osteoblast. It also has effects and it promotes um, collagen matrix mineralization. So osteomalacia and rickets in adults and children develop in the context of severe vitamin D deficiency. So humans obtain vitamin D by um, ingesting it in their diet, or um, it can be synthesized in the skin from the precursor by um, when, it, when it's um, converted by ultraviolet light, um, UVB radiation into um, vitamin D3. So factors such as season and latitude and the use of sunblock and pigmentation, um, melanin will um, absorb ultraviolet B radiation, so it will inhibit um, the synthesis. So there are factors that are going to um, affect the amount of vitamin D3 that can be synthesized. So D3 is an inert um, compound, and it is um, bound to vitamin D binding protein and is a chaperone to the liver. In the liver, um, it's metabolized by um, a 25-hydroxylase enzyme to 25-hydroxy um, vitamin D. Now, this um, compound is also biologically inert, but um, the 25-hydroxy D is the um, most reliable measure of um, vitamin D status and of the stores of um, the vitamin D that are available to um, an individual.